So we've got all the parts printed for a Ripple Struder V2. And you're going to want to combine those with, again, a NEMA 17 stepper motor of some sort. Or you can use one of the longer ones with higher torque, it's up to you. Um, you're going to need some square nuts, you're going to need some M3 hex nuts, you're going to need some like M13 or M16 uh, bolts, you're going to need some, uh, or not M13 or M16, M3 16mm long or 13mm long. You're going to need some longer ones. Honestly, the longer ones can be anywhere over uh, an inch and a half in length and they'll be fine. So they don't have to be shorter than a certain value. And you're going to want some threaded rod, the same as the one we used in the other uh, Ripple Shooter. It's a 632 threaded rod uh, stock and it's, um, yeah, standard stuff. And that's what these uh, square nuts are made for. They're 632 internally threaded. And then uh, you'll need like a um, an Allen wrench or you could use a screwdriver with a hex head. All right, so what you're gonna do first is you're gonna take the core of the Repl Struder V2. And uh, I just wanna go ahead and say real quick that when you print all these pieces, you can see we've printed them out of multiple different plastics and colors here. Um, ABS, PLA, uh, PT, PET, PETG, uh, Maybe some of the unusual like composite copolymers should work fine, um, but you want relatively stiff plastics. And again, ABS and PLA work great and they're easy to find and use, so I recommend those. When you print the core, you want to print it at a very high infill, so 70% or higher infill. I never recommend 100% because if you don't have your settings just right, it's very hard to do 100% infill. But 70% infill works really great for this, so I recommend that. And that's because this piece has to be very rigid. So this is PLA 70% infill. So first step, you're going to take the core and you're going to take the bottom of the Ripple Struder and basically connect it to the core like this. So you're going to take a couple of bolts, put them through these holes, and they're going to match up with the holes on the bottom of the core piece. Okay. Now these are meant to be forced in. So you're going to have to thread them in and they're not going to want to go because the holes in the core are smaller than the threads. But just force them in and they'll thread their way into the core and that's important uh, because this, ha this has to be a relatively rigid connection that's adjustable, later on at least. So you'll thread them in until the heads of the bolts are flat with the bottom of the piece. And once you've got that, you should have a little bit of a play here. And that's important for the operation of this device. It's weird, but I'll explain it later on. So now that you've got the core piece, you're going to start connecting the arms together. And uh, if you've seen the picture of the device, it looks kind of complicated. It does look complicated, but overall its operation is pretty simple. So I've got these pieces laid out. Um, you should be able to take them from their print arrangement and rearrange them to this. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take piece like this and a piece like this and you're going to take a piece like this and these two holes go in there so basically this goes there this goes there it should be a loose ish fit if it's not it will still work if it's tight once that's connected you're going to take this piece okay and you're going to line it up like this and you're going to press fit it on it should click in place so that's connected I'm going to do the same thing with this arrangement here So this one's assembled. All right, now I'm going to take these two and put them together. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use these two little cross braces. And you're going to need a couple of the longer bolts for this. So at this hole, I'm going to feed a bolt through. I'm going to put a cross brace on. I'm going to take this other arm and put it there. And you're going to tighten it down. Be gentle with this until it's on the device because it can be kind of fragile. And on that note, I recommend you print replacement pieces. So maybe print a few more of each of these pieces. They'll be available as an arrangement for being printed. Uh, as well as individual parts. So you, if you break one, you can just download the individual file and print it, as opposed to printing every single piece together at once. So I'm going to put the other brace in. Uh, here's the...
that through. Okay, so the uh, the spring arm mechanism is uh, put together. It's ready to go on the device. Um, what we're gonna do is open it, and the open position looks something like this. And we're gonna connect these white pillar pieces to the base, the bottom green piece here. First things first, uh, you're gonna put a, a bolt in on one side. So this fits over this, in this configuration. It looks crazy right now, but it'll work when it's all put together. And just like you did with the bottom piece, you're gonna have to force this bolt to thread into this white piece here. And just thread it in until it's roughly even with the other two bolts that you put in to the bottom piece. And that allows for a little bit of play and again that's important for the function of this device. So we're gonna do the same to the other side. Okay. Alright, so those are assembled. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I can close it like this if I want to. I'm just going to leave it kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the small gear on the NEMA motor. I'm not going to fully tighten it down when I put it on because we'll have to adjust its height on the, uh, on the drive axle or the stator or whatever it is. Rotor, rotor, that's what it's called. Okay, so you just need a couple of bolts with a couple of nuts to secure this gear here. And you only have to secure it lightly. Um, again, don't tighten it yet. Okay, so I can slide this up and down on the motor, that's good. So I'm gonna connect the motor here with a couple more bolts. Very similar to the other ripple screw. Okay. So now I can slide the gear, but it's kind of trapped by the core of the ripple extruder. I could technically take it out if I wanted to. It's a little tough, but it'll work. Um, but anyway, all right. So you should have something looking similar to this. What you're going to do now is you're going to put the uh, main gear together. And uh, this is just because you have to insert the nuts before you can put it on here. And so to do that, first you're going to take the lead screw piece that you have. It could be much longer, um, a little bit shorter. Uh, generally speaking, I think this is what, like four inches long? Something like that. Anyway, put a couple of these square nuts together on one end of this lead screw. And then tighten them together against each other. I just use finger tightness. That makes it easy to turn the lead screw later on. Now we're going to take, again, a couple of nuts and put them on the other side. Okay. Now instead of tightening them together, you bring them until they can't spin anymore and then reverse them until their faces are flat or parallel to one another. Coincident, I guess you could say. And then you're going to force both of them into the main gear in that square slot in the center. All right. Once they're in, don't push them any, like once they're all the way in, you don't have to do anything more. Just back out your lead screw. And that one came out with the lead screw, but the idea is the same. You basically just need both of these square bolts in there, or square nuts in there. Um, what happens next uh, is pretty easy though. So what you do is, uh, to make sure that this little square nut doesn't come out, you're just gonna basically force this gear onto the face of the core of the rebel shooter, like that, okay? Um, if this is tightened already, if you made that mistake, uh, just loosen it so that you can put this on a little more easily. You have to do this, it's a crucial step. Um, go ahead, 
and put your lead screw through the hole. You should see it come through on the inside of the rebel extruder. Okay. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to tighten down the little gear onto the motor, and you're going to do that by making sure that if you press this big gear down onto the core and you rotate it, the teeth of the little gear mesh very well with it. Okay. So if it needs to be raised a little or lowered a little, you can do that. Um, this will depend on, you know, how well your printing goes when you print these pieces. But generally speaking, you should have a, like a, maybe a millimeter gap between the bottom of the little gear and the face of the motor. Could be more, could be less. It's up to you, honestly. Um, okay, so now I'm going to secure this spring arm mechanism to these two holes right here. What I'm going to do that is just bring it back around and it's a little bit spring loaded so it might like bend or um, something like that and if you bend these arms too much they will snap um, they're designed to be under tension but they can only take so much so what you have to do is you feed this bolt through arm mechanisms through this hole kind of tough just because little plastics getting in the way but then you put a nut on that bolt and you're pretty much good to go. So this is the as assembled replicator. Now it's not going to work great without something in it. Um, it's meant to be loaded at all times uh, either with just the adapter or with the adapter and the syringe. So this is the adapter piece and what this is meant to do is you can print this in a variety of different sizes and uh, that will allow you to use a variety of different syringes. So we've been able to use, for example, we've been able to use a uh, like disposable um, BD plastic syringes, like 10 ml syringes. And we can do that without an adapter in there. To give you an example, like this clicks in very easily. And this little adapter piece we'll put up online with this whole thing as well. Uh, we've been able to use a 2.5 ml gas tight syringe with this particular adapter piece. Uh, they'll, they'll be labeled uh, as individual files. This clicks in and then this clicks into place right here. And then there's other adapters too. So we can use, if you really want to use a bigger syringe, you can use a 10 ml gas tight syringe. And for that, you don't need an adapter. So that's the largest one that this thing will, is compatible with and it just clicks straight in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, like most people, you're probably gonna wanna use the 2.5 ml gas tight or the 1 ml gas tight. This is a 2.5 ml. I'm gonna show you how that loads in here. First thing first, you take this adapter piece, whichever one is correctly labeled, the 2.5 ml gas tight, and you pop it in. You don't have to have the syringe already in it. Um, and then what that means now is you can take this 2.5 ml syringe, let's assume it has like, I don't know, water in it or, or uh, collagen solution or something like that. And with the uh, notations facing forward, or the, the markings, the indexes, whatever you wanna call them, you just push it in and it'll click in place, okay? Now, it's not done. Um, what you have to do is you have to place a piece on top of the plunger to make sure that there is zero play between the lead screw and the threads on the inside of the plunger. And that's a relatively easy thing to do. Um, you just need to print these pieces, they're part of the replicator, and assemble them. So you'll need one more square nut. You're gonna place that inside this little gear-like piece. And you're gonna slide this in and it should fit pretty well. Uh, once it's together, this is, I just call this the clutch, and what you wanna do is this'll go between your, the top of your syringe plunger and the lead screw. This is kind of painstaking, but you have to do it. You have to move the lead screw down until it interfaces with the syringe. Okay, once it gets there, just lightly feed it into the plunger, the threads in the plunger. Might take a couple of attempts. Once it's in, it's in. Yeah, there it goes.
All right, so once you've threaded it all the way down into the plunger, you'll feel it. It won't want to go any further, and if you spin it anymore, it'll spin the plunger in its socket. Uh, you're good. Next thing you have to do is you have to tighten the clutch against the head of the plunger. So that's righty tighty lefty loosey. So you're going to spin this clockwise, the teeth of this little clutch mechanism, until they don't want to go. Now, if you start continue, if you continue to spin, it's probably going to spin the lead screw in place. It may not. Just hold these two nuts at the top of the lead screw and tighten here, and then you are good to go. This thing is primed and ready for printing. Actually, sorry, you have one more thing to do. You have to pull this lever down like that. This actually primes it. Um, and this, this action, this lever action, also puts the entire assembly under compression, and it eliminates any play between the threads of the lead screw and the nuts inside the large drive gear. Um, so this should spin without spinning this lead screw in place, and that's important. Um, if this lead screw starts spinning when this gear moves, nothing's really going to happen. You're not going to extrude any fluid. Um, so if any of you have uh, questions or comments, again, just uh, reply to the video or send me a private message or email me if you look at the publication information. Or you can email Adam uh, to Adam Feinberg. Um, but yeah, this is essentially the assembled Replisteria. The next step I'll show you is how to load this if it's already on the Replisteria or the Replicator 2 or Printer Bot or something like that. And um, for mounting it to those devices, it's the same as our other Replistrator. It's just there's two mounting holes on this motor, and the mounts for those robots or those 3D printers, they feature two mounting holes to match up to these. Um, but as far as loading it while it's on the device, it's kind of tricky, so I'll show that in a separate video. So there it is.